Hi, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint bladed weapons. Now I'll be showing you the techniques using an axe, but I'll also be showing the results that you can gain on a sword at the end as well. Now the whole axe has been undercoated with Citadel Lead Belcher, which has given it a nice smooth coat, except for these areas where the axe had bent and the painted flaked, so I've used normal brushed on Lead Belcher there. We're going to start by applying some Citadel Null Oil, just to bring out all the details and grub up that blade a little bit. And when you're doing swords and similar weapons with blades on, it's exactly the same technique as you'd use on this. So I'll be showing uh, one of the Stormcast blades at the end, which has had exactly the same technique applied to it, so you can see the differences and the similarities to that. But if you apply the same technique to all blades, it gives them a nice used look, as well as giving them some nice shine on the edges of the blades. like so. Next up we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher. We're just going to lightly wet brush that back onto the axe. Now I'm using only a small amount on the brush and I'm gently going to brush that sideways across where this angled on the blade is. That's the area where it's going to get a lot of wear. I'd also get it right on the axe blade itself but we'll be applying some to that in a moment. You just want to feather that onto the blade so it's nice and shiny where the angle is and then it fades into where the null oil is. You're going to do this on both sides of the axe. It allows you to get some details and highlights onto a pretty smooth surface. What you also want to do is get the underside in the same way. Now, on this particular miniature, it's not too important because that the underside of the blade is always going to be facing the ground. So you can just do a little rough version of what you've done on the top side. But this would be exactly the same as a sword if the sword's got an angled double edge to it. So you'd have a ridge down the middle of the blade. So you'd be doing this to the ridge as well. And you're just going to be working that lead belcher right the way along the cutting edge of the blade too. To give that a nice shine because that would be probably the most well used area of it. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to do some of the detail work on it. So I'm going to be using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush, which has got a nice thin tip to it, a very good point. And you're just going to be doing some very thin, very fine lines using chrome across the edge of the blade. What this is to represent is areas where the blade's been caught, maybe when fighting or striking something, and it scratched the blade and just left nice shiny mark through the dulled part of it. So if you can carry them on onto the blade as well. Now you want to get a few different angles of these, so he's been in a bit of combat and they've been happening from different directions. You're also once again going to be using the chrome to go along the cutting edge of the blade. You also want to make sure that there's a little tiny ridge of that same chrome on the top edge of the cutting edge. So it looks like the area where it's been sharpened. So you want to go right the way along that blade of the chrome just to give that a good shine.
you get a few going on different directions there, like I mentioned. Now you can see as the blade moves side to side on the edge that we haven't put any lines on yet. You can't see very much until you angle it slightly, and then you can see where that raised angle is, where we put the lead belter earlier. It just catches the light and separates it from the area that's got the null oil on. As I say with saw blades, it's exactly the same technique. You'll be putting that same silver around the very edge of the blade, or the modeler chrome, I should say, sorry, but the a nice shiny metallic, regardless of what colour it is, around the cutting edge of the blade to make it look like it's been sharpened. A few straight line, shiny straight lines going across the blade, just to show where blades or other weapons, maybe armour, have scraped it when it's been in a fight. Any little nicks and cuts that you want to do onto the blade, also use the chrome or the shiny metallic to do that as well. Finally, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. We're going to use that around the bolt and around the handle. Just a few little bits on the blade just to grubby that up, make it a little bit grimier. So maybe it's not been as thoroughly cleaned as the blade itself. Now this is a very, very quick and easy technique to use. So the whole thing here, start to finish with breaks and a little bit of waffle has taken about eight minutes. So if you're doing that on a lot of models or you're batch painting, you can obviously do a bit quicker than that by batch painting. It's a very quick technique to use and it does make them look great on the battlefield. Now if you do use your models for like D&D &D or anything similar to that, it's also a great one to use on your character models. Maybe you wouldn't use it on the enemies and the minions that you're fighting, but you want to make your character look pretty good. That's what all these techniques are based on. Nice, quick and easy ways to get your miniatures looking great. Like so. Okay, so here's the Stormcast Eternals blade. That I've used the same technique on. You can see the ridge down the middle of the blade, the nicks on the edges and the point at the tip. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to our other social media, link below. Thanks very much.